What am I excited about fans seeing in the first? There's so much to see. There's so much going on. You had a wealth of things to pull from with this show. We've got the games, we've got the, the books. Is there any, are there any specific elements that you really, really wanted to maintain and any that you wanted to just divert from and, and go your own way? Yeah, I mean, we're pulling basically from the books totally. And there's about 3,000 pages of material. So it just started out with like, what is the best way to intro audiences to these characters and to this world? Because we wanted fans to stay interested, but we also wanted to bring it to maybe a new audience as well. For me, I fell in love with The Last Wish. It was the first book that I read. So I knew that I had to keep those short stories and bring in sort of Geralt's adventures and the foundation, the political foundation of the world. But I knew especially that I also wanted to meet Yennefer and Ciri really early. I didn't want to wait basically until year three to meet Freya. Um, so we brought those characters up and sort of crafted a new story and a new timeline um, so that everyone can be part of the world at the same time. And I think that's really exciting. I thought you'd have fangs or horns or something. I had them filed down. This is not your first time playing someone who's sort of human adjacent, not quite human, yes. but want to protect humanity. How would you compare Superman and Geralt? Are they maybe more similar than we would think? Firstly, I like that term, human adjacent. <laughs> I think that's really good. I'm gonna use that if I may. I think the inner voice to Geralt is very similar to Superman. Some of his actions certainly are as well, but if I were to compare Geralt to a superhero, I would have to say he's more of a blend between Batman and Superman. Batman on the exterior, abandoned as a child, trained exceptionally hard, but he also has this human adjacent physicality to him, which is more Superman, but he has the heart of Superman. He has a belief in a better world, he has belief in the potential goodness of people, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's how he behaves, responds, or how he presents himself. He's definitely broody like Batman. Yeah. Who would win in a fight? I mean, Superman. I think yeah. Ger <laughs> Geralt's pretty handy. In the same way that Batman is, if you give him enough planning and prep time, then he may might be able to beat Superman. Mm. But only because Supes is holding back. I'll take that chance. I'm lost. I don't know how I got here. Fantasy can be a little male-dominated, a little European-centric. I'd like to know how you tackled that and what your decision was like to bring in these, these women and make them really empowered and, and make that a central point of the story. Well, to me, I mean, Yennefer and Ciri are huge in the books as well, and they're really important to Geralt's journey. So if you're gonna write a story about Geralt, you need to see how he reacts to the people around him, and those people need to be at his level. What Lauren Freya and Anya have done with those characters, Yennefer and Ciri, is extraordinary. It's stuff which you won't find in the books, you won't find in the games, and that for me was amazing to watch. For me, the most important thing was I wanted to understand who Yennefer and Ciri were before they met Geralt. <laughs> I wanted to know sort of what was driving them, where they came from, what their journeys are gonna be, what they're scared of, all the things that actually build out all humans, men and women, mm. as real three-dimensional characters. I needed that for these women. And to me, it makes the storytelling that much more satisfying when you actually get the three of these characters together, you understand what they're each bringing into the equation and how they impact each other. I'm excited for fans to see series kind of how much she changes throughout the season and get to see a sort of glimpse into perhaps what she could become in the future. She goes from being very innocent and very naive and she's got that kind of stubborn feistiness at, at the same time and then you see her go very become very vulnerable and go through a lot of suffering and then she, she begins to learn and she begins to adapt and you see her take become a little bit more cold. Yennefer goes on a journey from 14 to in her late 70s and I'm excited for them to see the transformation scene and what her life was like as a child. You know, we all know and love, you know, th that Yennefer from the, from the books which presents this cold exterior but, but like Lauren said, we were so interested in, you know, there's so many layers to a human being and like why is she that? Like, why do people think she's so cold and, and mean and why does she present that version of herself? They create such a heart in these characters that you, and from the very beginning as well, so you have a belief in them and you're invested in them. So by the time Geralt meets these characters, you, you have a choice in who you're standing with. And I think they've done an amazing job in that. I don't want to give anything away too much, really. I think 
there are there's one scene in episode one which involves some human monsters, which uh, that that's probably one of my favorites. Uh, are we allowed to give? Uh, how much? Yes. <laughs> She's like, yes, give <laughs> everything. I haven't yet seen the. <laughs> and I can't wait to see that. Um, I loved. <laughs> I can't wait. I see the, yes, I I see. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. All the monsters that I've seen so far have been brilliant. Freya, how about you? Any action or monsters that you're really excited about? Well, I didn't get to meet any monsters <laughs> and not yet do any stunts, so it's a pretty boring answer, really. <laughs> you, no, ran I, okay. you ran a lot. I ran yes. a lot, and I went on a horse like a couple of times. Let's talk actually a little bit about the horse. Don't judge me. In talking to Henry, who is a horse person, it was really important to get the bond. Correct. So Henry went out to the stables and rode a bunch of horses and fell in love with Roach. Um, unfortunately for us, Roach was a male horse. Um, so uh, there's a lot of clever things that we have to do on screen to make sure that Roach is in fact a female horse, which she is in the books. Not a hard choice. Was, is there like a keying out aspect? <laughs> yes. Yes. Movie magic. Out. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh yeah. I no. Wow. Yeah. The, the level of dedication. I love it. <laughs> Why not kill them? Because then I am what they say I am. How do you feel having a second season already? Very excited about the second season already. Lots of opportunity for storytelling. I'm like, hey guys, where would you like to see your characters go? <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, workshop yeah. it right now. <laughs> I feel like it doesn't matter because I've written it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. <laughs> Also true. I'm so excited fight. for Siri. Yeah. Like she's got so much to come, and I know that you're really excited as well. So that's yeah. I'm yeah. just like itching to get. I just want to start filming. <laughs>